Hello, young Padawans. Welcome to Dark Dragon This Math. We're going to do some real world linear graph problems right now. Um, should be about three videos in length, um, and we'll do one problem each one. Um, so, Angela is driving to the White River. The distance traveled d miles after t hours is given by d is equal to 40t. Graph the relationship between d and t. Use two units on the horizontal axis to represent one hour and two units on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. Um, so, and then it also gives us this table right here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do when I, when I am given a problem like this is before I think too heavily because there's a lot of words there and we get lost and overwhelmed real quick is I'm just going to look at this end part right here. And this right here, these last two sentences are going to tell me how I create my graph. And that, is, that gives, once I create my graph, I have a visual and, and everything's so much easier from there. So, oh boy, uh, unicorn. Use two units on the horizontal axis to represent one hour. So what that means is here's my horizontal axis. Remember, horizontal is left and right. That every two spaces or two units is one hour. So two hours, three hours, four hours, five. And that's nice, simple enough. Um, and then in two units on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. So two units, and that, that's that second sentence, uh, or the second part of it. Two units on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. So that means on the vertical axis, every two <sighs> is going to be 20. All right, so I've labeled my axis axes with my numbers. Um, I still want to label them themselves. Um, so this, the left and right, is t, and that is time. So time and t hours, and up and down is distance traveled, and that is d miles. And I also want to give this a um, a title. So the title I'm going to give it is Angela's Driving. And that comes from Angela's Driving to the White River. The distance traveled, uh, d miles, blah 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 and so on. So that's a this over here is a little blurry, I notice. Um, I don't know if that'll do anything or not. So. Uh, yeah, there, that's a little better. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to graph. And I'm, I've, give, I've been given the table already, so I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. So I have at t hours. Uh, we've traveled no time. After one hour, we've traveled 40 miles. After two hours, shoot. After two hours, I've traveled 80, or Angela has. Three hours is 120. And I'm getting all these from right here. And then four hours is going to be 160. And if you'll notice, everything connects in a nice little neat line when you do it correctly, which I did not. All right, and if you draw dots big enough, you can't tell when you make a mistake, so that's nice too. Okay, so here um, I'm going to use this graph to answer some questions about Angela's driving. So the first question is, what type of graph is it? What type of graph is the graph? Um, every question on our homework is going to be a linear graph. We are working with linear graphs right now. So A is linear. And that's just something we need to uh, 
get used to doing. Uh, B, how far did Angela drive in 3.5 hours? So the way I do this is I look at 3.5 on my graph. And this is why it's so important to do your graph correctly. 3.5 hours, go all the way up until it meets the graph, and then go over to see the distance traveled. It's 140. So part B, in 3.5 hours, Angela travels 140 miles. Another way to do that is to look at this table. 3.5 is basically what's happening right here in the middle. So what would be happening in the middle of 120, 160? 140 would. Um, so that's another way to do it. You can also, but sometimes it becomes a bit, it, it can be very complicated. Uh, plug in, uh, plug in 3.5 for t is say 40 times 3.5. But what you'll notice in later questions that becomes a lot harder. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore that that way for now. So what is what is the speed at which Angela is driving? That's literally look at your units. We have miles and we have hours. So on this, on the, um, the independent variable, if that were 1, how fast would it be going? Because you're always going to constant speed in a linear graph. So in 1 hour, you traveled 40 miles. So this is literally 40 miles per hour. That's how fast Angela is driving. Um, decently simple. Um, Sorry. Uh, D. Angela has driven for four hours. If she drives for another hour at a constant speed, how far will she drive at all? So she's driven four hours and she's at 160. So four hours, she's at 160 uh, miles. We go 40 miles per hour, right? And so basically we're... Um, we're just going up one more mile. Uh, so we have in one more mile, or excuse me, one more hour. So in five hours, we're going to go to 200 miles. And I hope that makes sense. Just basically how fast you're going, add that to what your speed was. You could also use the graph and consider it going further. Um, part E, if Angela wants to drive at least 120 miles, how many hours will she need to drive to exp and express your answer as an inequality? So the way to do that is to say, okay, so 120 is right here. She wants to go at least 120 miles. She needs to go at least three hours. If she wants to go more, she'd have to go more this way. So if she wants to go more miles, she has to go more hours. So we're going to say, she would be on the road t greater than or equal to four hours. And then finally, f is what is the independent and dependent variable. So the independent variable is always the horizontal. It's always the top of this graph. And it's always the one that is not alone, the, the variable that's not alone. So the independent variable is t for hours, which leaves the dependent variable. It's always the vertical. It's always the bottom one for our, our tables, at least. And it's always the variable alone. So the dependent variable is going to be d miles. All right, math.